that, I mean, that, that sounds like an awfully depressing reality. Does it, does, it, does it need to be a depressing reality? Well, I mean, it's like any reality. Uh, you know, you've got to embrace the reality and know how to deal with it. Uh, you, you, yeah, there are debt cycles, and debt cycles provide great opportunities, and they provide real problems. So I, th I think it's just like a, a progression, a disease that progresses. And the reason I wrote the book um, is it actually was just a compendium of research that I wrote mostly before the financial crisis. And it's because I think it's essential for everybody to understand the sequence of events, the logical sequence of events that makes these all the same. So as you know, there's 48 of them in there. They all play out pretty much the same way, except there are inflationary and deflationary ones depending on the currency. But basically, I'm in 60 pages, I just want to convey that template. So let's talk about one of those two types of debt crises, the inflationary depression. Mm -hmm. Is that what's playing out right now in Turkey, in Argentina, in emerging markets more broadly? Yeah, certainly. And this has all played out many times. This isn't the first time that Argentina has gone through it. It has a habit of going through it. And it's not the first time it's happened anywhere else. So you could follow it. I mean, basically, the big deal is whether the currency is denominated, the debt is denominated in your own currency or in your foreign currency. And when it's denominated in foreign currency, like these countries have a lot of dollar denominated debt, then it, it, they have a problem trying to service that dollar denominated debt. When the dollar goes up and the money they're earning is in local currency, then they don't have enough cash and then they get into that spiral and as a result of that, they have to print more money, the currency depreciates and it happens in a very mechanical way. Most of the countries don't have reserve currencies, don't have the debt denominated in their own currency and as a result, most of their crises are of that sort. And there's a dynamic as to how they complete the cycle. In other words, what happens is when the currency goes down in value, essentially because of inflation and the like, they wipe out the local currency debt. If you own the local currency debt, you're wiped out. You've evaluated 27 of these non-domestic currency crises in the book. So take what's happening today in Argentina, Turkey, and like I say, emerging markets more broadly, and compare it, if you would, to some of the things that we might remember. There are some people who are old enough to recall the peso crisis of 1994, the Asian currency crisis of 97, or perhaps the Russian debt default of 98, or the Argentine default of 2001. This looks most like what to you? Well, it, it looks like that. It looks like those, because the currency depreciation um, then also raises the interest rate differential. And um, in the process of wiping out the local currency denominated debt, because it's essentially monetized away, the currency becomes cheaper. All the crises are self-correcting mechanisms. So when the currency becomes cheaper, then it becomes more, the balance of payments improves because they can sell more or uh, they import less. And also they begin to attract capital if they remain a healthy place for people to invest but that's capital. But not, that's not happening that's, yet. These, just, these, just, these countries me, haven't hit bottom, have well, they? No, but they're, uh, I would say, two-thirds on the way toward uh, hitting bottom, I believe. And then what happens is, then it depends on what the monetary policy operates like. Because the question will be whether those who are holding those currencies will receive an interest rate differential that will compensate for the depreciation and the value of the currency. And so the central bank at some point, um, sometimes through IMF support or sometimes through that other, there's just a tightening of monetary policy, has to create an interest rate that will offset both the inflation rate and the depreciation of the currency. And knowing how that mechanically happens is the means by which you can identify the bond, the bottoms in those currencies. I see. When you say that to you it looks as though they're two-thirds on the way toward the bottom now, does that mean, is it as simple as saying that there's still a one-third depreciation left in their currencies before they're able to reach that point where they can, where the currencies are cheap enough to attract new capital and restore uh, the balance of payments. Yeah. Speaking as a generalization, I, I'm saying that they are uh, that, uh, 
if, you, if it was placed out classically, what they'll have is large fiscal deficits. And how they choose to monetize those fiscal deficits or how they choose to restructure their balance sheets through IMF loans or through the tightening of monetary policy will be the determinant of the exact bottoms in those currencies, right? And so, but just generally speaking, the greater of the moves is behind us, the greater of the concern, we will have a lot of panic, we, uh, um, more panic, uh, and you'll have that. And as the saying goes, the time to buy is when there's blood in the streets, right? And to know when there's value, and those are the calculations one has to do.